Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be testing out some new releases from Marc Jacobs. I ordered a couple products from their new cafe collection which I am super excited about. You guys know I talked about this in my last new makeup purchase or pass video how I was definitely planning to pick up these products. So we have here from the collection a new foundation. This is the Extra Shot Caffeine Concealer and Foundation so it's kind of like a two-in-one. You get this coffee type of packaging kind of looks like coffee with just a splash of creamer super cute and then this is what the foundation looks like and this is the applicator so you do have a doe foot so it kind of looks like a big concealer to be honest now this does look a little bit small and it does say that there's only 0.54 ounces in here so most foundations are going to have a full ounce this one does not although it is full coverage so maybe we don't need that extra half ounce because maybe we only need a little bit of product it says conceal and perfect caffeine infused creamy full coverage and it does retail for $39 and then on here it does say it includes caffeine oat extract and five forms of coconut which I was a little bit concerned about so I'm just gonna put these ingredients into my favorite app skin charisma well technically it's not an app it's a website and see what comes up so looking on here like coconut wise I was just a little bit worried that it would have like coconut oil or something like that which can break people out I have breakout prone skin but it looks like the main coconut ingredient is this hydrogenated coconut acid which it says it can be a fungal acne trigger but it doesn't say it's bad um, like for the skin at all it's supposed to be conditioning for the skin it does have hyd hydrogenated coconut oil in it but it doesn't say that clogs the pores at all so Maybe that is fine. Usually it would say if it does clog pores, but way down on the list, they do have hydrogenated vegetable oil in the ingredients, which does clog pores. So that one has a comedogenic rating of three, which is in the middle. But since it's not in like the top five ingredients, I think it will be okay. And it's nothing to really be concerned about since it is more towards the middle bottom of the ingredient list. It does say it has fragrance in the formula as well, but maybe a slight... Does it smell like coconut? Maybe a slight coconut scent, but to me it smells like regular foundation. Maybe once we put it on the skin, it will smell a little bit different. So this seems like it has some actually good ingredients for dry skin even. So I'm very curious how this is going to work out. So I did order that as well as this guy. This is the Cafe Marc Jacobs Omega Times 3 Powder Blush Bronze and Highlight. And I got the Tantastic Glow. It's called. It comes in two shades. One um, has a more pink blush. One has a more peachy blush. And then one has Tantastic Bronzer and one has the Tantalize, which is for deeper skin tones. But how beautiful is this packaging? Just wow. I love it. I love the marbled look and the cream and coffee look. And then here is the product. So this is about the same size as their bronzer pans, but it's split into threes. This highlighter does look a little bit darker than I was expecting to go with the lighter shade of bronzer. I was expecting something a little lighter, but maybe it'll apply really pretty. It does look very gold. And this one has like the peachy pink blush while the other one had more of a pink one. This retails for $49, which is the typical price for the bronzers, but this time you're getting three different products so let me go ahead and I'll swatch this for you as well so you guys can see what these look like on the skin all right so here is the swatches I'm wondering how that highlight is gonna perform I wasn't a fan of how it swatched it kind of seems like it might disappear it was a little bit chalky so that's a little bit surprising for them but we will try it out on the skin and see how it goes and this one does smell like the Tantastic Bronzer, so it has like a coconut smell. So let's get into the try-ons here. Let's go ahead and try out the foundation. So what I really want to do with this one is do primer on one side and without primer on the other just to see if my primer affects how this is wearing. So I'm going to use my NYX Marshmallow Primer. This one seems to be working well for me. I really like it. It's a smoothing primer and it's very hydrating. So I am going to put primer only on this side of my face just to see how it wears because I don't want the primer to like affect anything so that's why we're gonna do one half with no primer so you can see if it makes a difference or not so this one also smells really good but I've just been obsessed with this primer and I usually don't really care for primers but I love that this one it's slightly more affordable it's still expensive but it's I think it's in like the $15 range maybe 18 I don't know it's like mid-range but I feel like it works well. It's a smoothing primer without being like a silicone-y feeling and it does feel very moisturizing on the skin. 
So for my shade, I did pick the shade Light 150. I am a little bit self-tan, so I don't know how this is going to look. Hopefully it will match okay. So I'm just basically going to use the applicator and dot this on the face, is how it suggests. On Sephora, it says to dot it in the center of the face and then move outwards. So I'm just going to use what is on the applicator. I'm not going to go in for any extra just yet. Okay, so it seems to be blending really nicely. And I think the color will be pretty good as well. Just a little bit light right now, but it should match up once I add bronzer and everything. And I like that it's not too thick or anything like that. Sometimes full coverage foundations can be very thick and cakey, and this one feels really nice. So this is like the first layer. I would consider this first layer a medium coverage. I would not say this is quite full yet, so we are gonna add more. I'm like a full coverage junkie, so some might be okay with this amount of coverage, but I like to see it like the full capacity. Okay, now we're talking. <laughs> Definitely getting more of that full coverage look. So it's looking very pretty on the skin. It's giving me like this almost smoothed out appearance. I think it looks really nice. It has a little bit of a dewy glow to it as well. So it's definitely not matte, I would say, but it looks really beautiful. Kind of almost like I'm wearing a filter. Let's try it as concealer. So for that, on when I was reading on Sephora, it said to leave, when you if you're using it as concealer, to leave it on for like a minute. So we're gonna just conceal the inner and outer portion of the eye here. Usually with concealer, I like a little bit lighter, but obviously I don't want to buy a whole nother shade just for that. I'm going to go over these acne spots I have as well, and we'll just let that sit a So minute. next, I am going to just blend in that concealer on those breakouts I had. It covered really well. Let's blend it on the under eyes. So what I do with breakouts is I always add a little bit of powder right over top to set those in. And I usually apply with my finger because it just covers well. And those breakouts are pretty much hidden. And I just want a little bit more concealer in the center. I, just, I used a brush that really was not my favorite concealer brush, so I'm actually going to blend that with my fingers just to get a little bit more coverage under there. But under the eyes, it does look nice. It covers any darkness I had. And then I'll definitely set with a powder because it isn't drying down completely. I'm just gonna use a little bit of my One Size by Patrick Star setting powder. And I'm putting this all over. So that's just going to take away the shine for me. If you guys are more dry skin, you don't have to do that. But I like my foundation to be pretty budge proof. And I always find that powder helps control the shininess. Because I will get shiny again as we go throughout the day. And it just helps my makeup not move. So here is a close-up. It looks pretty flawless. I really like it so far. All right, so now I'm gonna do um, a few more makeup touch-ups. I need to put something on the eyes, and then we'll be back to try out this cheek trio. All right, time to try out the cheek palette. I am so excited. Now these are smaller pans, so it might be interesting to see how we're gonna fit our brushes in there, but I do like that they put the bronzer in the middle because I feel like that's the biggest space, so I should be able to fit my brush in there. I just wanted to kind of compare it to my original Tantastic. I have like the OG OG. This is so old. So if you do have this already, it is in the palette. I know a lot of you guys got it when it was at TJ Maxx for a while, and I think it is still on sale on Sephora's website. So let me go ahead and swatch them next to each other, just make sure there's no differences or anything like that. They look the same to me, so I think we're good there. Same formulation, super soft, one of my favorite, favorite bronzers. I'm going to take this bronzer brush, and we'll just dip right into the middle and apply this to the cheekbones. I think these edges really help it so that the powders don't mix together. 
which I've had issues with that with other like duos and split pans but yeah I like that these have the edges so that it keeps the product there but I mean I feel like I am getting a little bit of fallout in the other colors and maybe I should just use a smaller brush but this is like my favorite <laughs> bronzer brush I use such large brushes as my favorites I just feel like they really give a nice diffused look to the face Let's try the blush. I'm gonna take just this Firma 103 brush and dip into, let me get the fallout out, this like peachy pink. Oh, that's really pretty too. It kind of reminds me of their Air Blush formula, which I used to love, um, but this one's definitely more matte. But it is such a pretty color and very easy to blend. I didn't have to go back in for more product either. I think that's like decent pigmentation. Now let's try the highlight, which I'm a little bit nervous about. I just hope it's not too dark. I'm using a Sigma Spotlight Duster F37. And I think the highlight that's in the other palette with Tantalize is even darker. I think it's more of a rose gold. But I think they should have put more of like a light champagne or like a pearlescent color in this one personally. It just doesn't seem like it's my favorite highlighter formula ever. And it's not like super, super beaming. It's more of a natural highlighter. And here's how everything looks close up all together. Definitely, if you guys are darker than me, um, you might want to go for the Tantalize one because the Tantric is pretty light in tone uh, as far as bronzer goes. But I love it. Very cool toned. So I'm going to go ahead and wear this makeup for a little bit longer. I want to at least wear it three or four hours, and then I'll let you guys know how everything is holding up. All right, guys, it has been about five hours now, so I do look a little bit different, maybe a little bit oilier here, but I wanted to share kind of my final thoughts on everything and give you guys like an up close of how everything is looking. So here is the up close shot. Honestly, everything looks pretty good so far, and I have to say... The number one thing about this foundation is it actually is very lightweight on the skin. Now, I'm not sure if this is mostly meant to be concealer or foundation or if it really is supposed to be for both and if I use too much because I did feel like I had to use quite a bit to get that full coverage look that I wanted and since we only have like half an ounce in here, it's just not very much. I feel like this is about the same size as the Too Faced like Born This Way concealer. So I noticed a lot of people are using this more for concealer, but I actually really do think it makes a great foundation, I have to say. I think it looks really beautiful on the skin, and I just love getting a full coverage look that isn't heavy or weighing me down, or I don't feel like I just have to like wipe my makeup off right away. I could seriously go for a longer time with this foundation on, and it doesn't get super, super oily, which is awesome, because um, a lot of foundations do build up more oil on me as the day goes on, so I'm kind of surprised by this one. It has worn very well for I would say the first four hours and now at hour five it is starting to break up a bit but I do feel like it wears really beautifully. It doesn't enhance texture or anything as far as I can see but I am seeing a little bit of transferring. Of course I have been running around the house cleaning. I've been sweating so a little bit, a little bit has transferred off. Um, like this pimple area, I guess this is kind of a hard one, but that one's kind of transferred. It is like right in the crevice of my nose, so you can't really see that it's covered up that much anymore. But like this one down here is covered up still. I'm getting a little bit of breaking up on my chin. And yeah, just my nose mostly is the part that's breaking up. But I do feel like it does look nice as a foundation. Now as a concealer, I feel like I struggle hardcore with concealers and I can never have one that just like sits put and stays all day, but um, I am noticing my darkness coming through so I don't think it really has held up long as a concealer under the eyes or anything like that and maybe it would be different if I did get a lighter shade, but since I use just my skin tone color, I'm just not sure if I'm loving how it looks under there. I just feel like it looks a little bit dark. Um, you can see my lines a lot by my eyes, which happens a lot with concealer too. So, I don't know. Maybe I should have used a different powder. But I'm thinking I might actually like this better for foundation than concealer, even though I did have to use a lot to get the full coverage that I want. I mean, we did go in twice and dotted it around the face, but I mean, I'm probably going to go through this 
fairly quickly if that's the case because there is only 0.5 ounces so I feel like they mostly want you to use this as a concealer so I do like it I do want to test it out a bit more this is just kind of like my first impressions but I do wish they would have made an entire ounce of product I feel like that would have made more sense if you are intending it to be a foundation because unless it is something that is so full coverage that you only need a few dots maybe they're meaning to wear it more medium coverage as foundation I'm not sure but I do really like the overall look that it gives me and I feel like it does work well for my skin it's not too dry so maybe combination skin this could work for I'm not sure about dry skin but I feel like oily skin could definitely get away with this even though it gave us a little bit of a glow in the beginning I did set it with my one size blurring powder and that seems to mattify it really well throughout the day and I'm always used to touching up but I really haven't gotten oily that much and I feel like the foundation has lasted very well for me compared to some other foundations I've tried so far that's kind of my thoughts there I'm not sure if the caffeine in here really does a whole lot for me I don't know um, let me talk about the cheek palette so um just going into this, I'll say I, I'm kind of disappointed in this one just because of the highlighter. I'm not impressed with the highlight formula. It's very natural on the skin. I was expecting a little more like poppy or punchy type of color um, from this highlight and it's just very natural and I don't really like the tone, like the golden tone of it and I wasn't a huge fan of the formula. So the highlight is kind of throwing it off for me and making me not enjoy it as much. The scent on this one I feel like definitely lingers more than my other bronzer so if you guys don't like scents like this one I could smell for a little bit longer than my original and I don't know if that's just because this one I've had for a long time and this one's like a fresh one that could be it. It is nice to have all three of the colors together so you could do blush, bronzer, and highlight but I don't know if this is really a necessity especially if you do already have the bronzer because um, I'm just not really impressed with that highlighter at all but the blush I thought was very beautiful on the cheeks. I do enjoy that a lot. The formula is very nice but yeah I just I was expecting more from this so I feel like I'm just a little bit let down by this one. I don't think it's like a must have especially for the price. I have more cheek palettes that I do prefer over this and it is beautiful and stunning and I mean yeah I'm going to keep it in my collection and use it but I'm just not as wowed as I thought I would be originally i was so excited for that anyways that's kind of my thoughts on this collection the cafe collection from mark jacobs i'd love to know um what you guys are thinking down below if you guys plan to pick any of these up anytime soon i'm very curious about the other shade in this palette the omega times three to see how that goes i feel like most of the reviews up have gotten the same one that i did the tantastic glow but i will go ahead and let you guys go thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next one bye guys